for being here today for uh, a meeting that is out of the ordinary. Um, this is our regularly scheduled Rules Committee meeting, but obviously we will be discussing matters today that are um, uh, extraordinary circumstances, and uh, we'll have more to discuss about that in a bit. Um, let's go ahead and first call the roll and establish our quorum. Very good. Councilmember Krikorian? Here. Councilmember Harris Dawson? Present. And Councilmember Soto Martinez? Here. Very good. All are present and accounted for. All right. Uh, First, I would like members, before we begin uh, public comment, I, I have a number of proposals for consent approval. Uh, we won't be able to vote on those matters until after public comment, but I do just want to give uh, the members and the public the heads up about what my recommendations will be. Uh, on item three, I would recommend that we adopt the resolution and the CLA's resolution attached to the CLA report dated June 14th, 2023 on items four, five, six, seven, and eight, I would recommend that we adopt the resolution. On item number nine, I would recommend that we adopt the CLA's revised resolution attached to the CLA report dated June 16th, 2023. On item number 10, I would propose that we adopt the CLA's revised resolution attached to the CLA report dated June 20th, 2023. On item 11, I would propose that we adopt the CLA's revised resolution attached to the CLA report dated June 1st, 2023. And on items 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, I would propose that we adopt the resolution. And on item number 19, a motion by McOsker and Rodriguez, I would recommend that we adopt the motion. Um, which would leave us only with items one and two remaining. Um, so that will be my proposal for consent approval. Um, are there any items among those members that you would like to call special or have further questions about? Yes, um, I know there's gonna be public comment on item number 10, uh, and some members of the public will be asking us to continue that item as they expect uh, that bill to be uh, amended on Tuesday in Sacramento. Okay. So that I know that that's a, a request that we'll hear. Okay. Thank you. Anything? Yeah. yeah I'd like to call item three uh, special for a separate vote. Three. So three and ten, uh, which will take up uh, special. And I, I know there's departmental staff and other members who are here members of the staff who are here on some of the other items that I just mentioned. Given the number of people that we have in the room and the fact that more people want to come in the room to be able to provide public comment, um, I'd ask that if you're not here on items one, two, three, or 10, you can step out, make more room for the public to come in, and if we need you, we'll call you back, okay? Thank you very much for coming out. Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes, uh, on, on, uh, Mr. President, on items uh, one and two, I would just, um, one, I wanna communicate to everyone that we've got people, we've got a full room, and then my understanding is we have people in Councilman Price's office waiting to come in, so folks will speak and leave and we'll replace those folks. Given the amount of people that we have and the amount of content that we have, uh, I, I would just early on make a request that the president consider holding this item on the desk uh, for, throughout uh, the balance of this meeting uh, to allow, one, everybody to speak, uh, but also uh, allow the members of the committee to get more information before we proceed. Well, thank you. And um, it's clear that there is a significant amount of public interest in this issue, and I want to make sure that we hear from everybody who would like to speak, uh, both today and going forward. And it's clear that we will probably not be able to get uh, as much input uh, from the members of the public as I think the, the gravity of the situation merits by the end of today's hearing. Um, so it would certainly be, we'll discuss this and debate this after we've had a chance to uh, hear from the public, but it would certainly be um, something that I would want to strongly consider uh, so that we have the opportunity to take the maximum amount of comment and also, frankly, uh, so that Mr. Price has an opportunity to, to respond to the charges that have been presented uh, uh, against him because, um, again, I, I don't want to 
I don't want to anticipate our discussion that we'll have in, in a moment, but um, I have said from the beginning in introducing this motion that it was important for us to consider as much information as we can to act appropriately for everyone concerned, the people of the Ninth District, the functioning of the council, um, Mr. Price, all of the stakeholders who have an issue in this, we need to evaluate very carefully the real world impacts of the steps that we may take. And I, I just want to say I appreciate also your motion, which I hope we will be taking up uh, <clears throat> to move forward on a plan of options that are available to us. Because if we don't have the full picture, I don't think we can really intelligently make a decision of this magnitude. Um, we'll discuss that further during debate, but um, Thank you. certainly we'll consider that, yes. Um, all right, uh, Mr. Soto Martinez, did you want to say anything at the beginning or shall we? Um, okay, if there are no objections then, uh, let's go ahead and begin our public comment. Um, just uh, again to reiterate Mr. Harris Dawson's point, there are a lot of people who would like to speak and so um, we're going to try to move expeditiously so we get to hear as many people as we can. Um, if uh, you would like to speak on an item on the agenda, you'll have one minute for each item that you would like to speak on. Uh, and then uh, if you want to speak on general public comment, you'll have a, an additional minute to speak on that. Um, and when you have completed your uh, uh, speaking, if you wouldn't mind, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but if you wouldn't mind stepping out so that more people have an opportunity to come in, unfortunately, we're strictly limited on the number of people that are allowed to come into the room. So that will be a benefit for everyone else who, who would like to speak. Um, so with that, let me just... Okay, um, so do, do we need to do anything else before we take public comment? We need to, okay. All right, then let's go ahead and begin public comment. I'd like to call uh, first Pastor Smart, Pastor Crawford, Dr. Jerry Abram. If Good afternoon. Greetings to this committee and my dear friends that are here I'm president and CEO of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And as you can remember, just shortly ago, we had you in court similar on an issue similar to what current price is facing. I just want to make sure that we don't go down the same road again, I, that we really look at what is being said, first of all, out of the office of the district attorney. The flimsy, if I, I can interpret, the flimsiness of this case and the continued de degradation of African-American males and females by elect in this elected system. We're tired of it. And so I would hope that you would, as a body, at least wait until after you come back from, from your break and bring a hearing into South LA, into the councilman's district. So by that time, I'm hoping that whatever the DA has said, whatever they're trying to do, whatever misnomer they're building, that it will be an opportunity. We can see things then. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Shep Crawford. I am the senior pastor of the Experienced Christian Ministries. Um, and I'm also a chairman of United We Stand Up, both organizations inside of CD9. And I'm here just to ask you to do the right thing. Um, if, if Councilman Kern Price is presumed innocent until proven guilty, that means that you would be suspending an innocent person. And I understand how hard this may be, but Let's say, for instance, he's found guilty. Let's say, for instance, you keep him on and he's found guilty. Then you do what you need to do. Everyone will understand that. But if you suspend him and he's found innocent, then you would have done him wrong. So the question is, why suspend him? 
Would you say that because he has lost the trust of the people? Not in CD9. In fact, everyone I believe or who I've talked to who voted for him still trust him. And the people who don't trust him didn't vote for him. And so I want you to take that into consideration. Why would we suspend him? CD9 loves him. We're doing a great job there. And suspending him would be suspending us. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Good afternoon. Hello, Dr. Jerry Abraham. Uh, I'm a family and community medicine physician in CD9 in South Los Angeles. Um, together, working with CD9, our leadership, Counselor Kern Price, together we have made sure that over 300,000 people in South Los Angeles had access to life-saving COVID-19 vaccines. That's the work that we have done. It's one example of all the work that Mr. Price has done on behalf of the people, particularly the poorest district within the city of Los Angeles, within a district where the population is black and brown, where we deal with racial tensions and divides and economic turmoil daily. We live in a place where over half of our community live under 200% of the poverty line, where 20% don't even have one vehicle, and yet we have multi-generations and many people that need to get to work, get to school, and do the work that we have to do. We are going to destroy the work that we have done as a community, improving the new ninth, improving the health of our people, education, and economic empowerment. This counselor has done more to unite the black and Latino community, especially right here in South Los Angeles than any other leader, and three decades of work shows that. Good people do fall down, and when we do, together as a village, we help each other step up and we put one foot in front of the other. What we're doing here, we know that voting is a social determinant, a political determinant of health, and we are about to disenfranchise the most poor, the most vulnerable, those that continue to be minoritized and marginalized within our community, and someone else is going to take it away from the people who had the vote, who had the power, and put their representative in place. And so we know we can wait till July 13th, and we know we need to send a message to black and brown men in our community that you are innocent until proven guilty, and we must believe in that justice system. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'd like to call a few more names. Jacqueline DuPont Walker. James Elmendorf, and Isaac Perdue, please. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, President and members of the Council. I was compelled to be here today because CD9 deserves to have the continued representation of Councilman Price. As I listened to what appear to be charges, only 50% could really be true. Uh, if, in fact, uh, we have that consideration from you that he does need to stay in place to represent CD9. I stand specifically for 31 homeless vets who would have no place without the strong support and urging of Councilman Price. I stand for 75 persons in King Solomon's Village, a homeless shelter in CD9. I stand for those who have known him over the years, even before he was elected official, because he always stood for what was right. And he has not changed. He is consistent. And we must be consistent in our support for him. If you don't have to suspend him, we urge you to keep him in place to do his job. If you go home and think about this and the presumption of innocence until proven guilty, I think you will agree with us that we need the representative of CD9 in place until and if, and we think it is not going to happen, until there is something else that comes up. We believe these charges are bogus. Give an opportunity for him to speak his word, to defend himself, and you as colleagues, think about the person that is represented with you all of this time. I think you will agree with us. We pray for you, and we pray that you will do the right thing. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, council members. My name is James Elmendorf. from the policy director at the Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy. I'm here to ask that you do not suspend council member Price. Um, we, we believe uh, very clearly that the charges are not what they appear to be. Uh, that when you are faced with a question when Jose Huizar was accused of taking bribes for hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's appropriate to consider suspension and to ultimately suspend him. But in this case, when someone is accused of essentially administrative errors, even if they were true, they do not merit suspension, and we do not believe you should suspend him. Thank you very much. Please do not disenfranchise anyone from, the, from Council District 9. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Isaac Perdue, and I'm a member of the community. And um, I would just like to say that I have worked under 
uh, Mr. Price by distributing gifts and other things such as food, like turkey, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call uh, Felicia Richard, Elita Mendez, Dr. Belay, and James Jones, please. Hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Elida Mendez, and I am Area 1 Rep, Empowerment Congress, Southeast Neighborhood Council. Uh, my community is um, Green Meadows, the one that I represent. And um, this shares the boundaries with uh, City 9 and City 8, uh, with Council Member uh, Marquis Harris Dasson uh, and um, Council Member Curran Price. Um, I am here to, today to say uh, that Council Member Curran Price, he's been uh, such a great work in our community. He's been done uh, so many uh, things, especially with the uh, public services. Uh, he's been bringing uh, the resources that our community struggles for so many years. I've been living in the community for 35 years and he's been working with us together. Um, we have uh, collaborated uh, with community cleanups and my surprise that I saw him join us, sweeping the street with us. So this man really cares for our community. Um, for a long time, we struggled to bring in the resources, but Council Member Price, he always support us. The Green Meadows Park right now is prior to renovations, thanks to the effort that he puts in bringing these resources, $6.9 million pretty soon coming over to the Green Meadows Park for renovation. And this is a proof that he really cares for green spaces, for communities like us. On our community, black and brown community that is always struggling for resources, now working together with a council member, I think that this man deserves the opportunity that he is waiting for to prove and clean his name for the justice that he needs. Um, this country is known as exists the democracy and also the justice. Please Thank you. think about it. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Felicia Richard and suspending Councilman Curran Price from the 9th District due to being accused of several crimes is confusing to his constituents. I cannot believe that this is a democratic process when you are be rushing to judgment to suspend him when he has not been tried or found guilty. You all are rushing to judgment and I wish you would reconsider suspending him and let the process play out. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Reverend James I. Jones, Jr., better known as Reverend JJ, throughout our communities. And I'm here to, today. I wouldn't be anywhere else. As a matter of fact, uh, once I got the uh, word that I had the opportunity to speak on one, what we know of our communities, we don't have to make up, sit up. It's, it's like at a, at a funeral when you have to try to find out and pick, uh, and when you don't even start talking so much about the individual and making up things that you don't have to, we don't have to do that with current price. We already know that he's been a true, a true soldier for not for all our communities, and it would be remiss if we didn't stand when we have the opportunity at this particular time. We have an old song in the Baptist church that said, made a work I've done, speak for me. And, and, and we can we can just let go over the record and everything you heard over here we can concur, we can concur with um, as Pastor JJ running the uh, South Bureau Minister Alliance over 200 pastors throughout the community that can stand with us and we are ready and ready and willing to be whatever we need to do to stand with a man with integrity a man that we love and a man that uh, is a, a blessing. Uh, not only to each and every one of us here today, but throughout our, 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 our community. So I would uh, employ you all at this particular time to do the right thing and let uh, Current Price do what he's been doing, which is the great job, the awesome job that he's been performing in our community. Unite and bring us together. God bless you.
Thank you, Reverend. Next speaker, please. Good I'm afternoon. Pastor Oliver E. Bowie, and um, I'm here to support uh, Councilman Kern Price uh, because Councilman per Kern Price has been nothing more than a friend to me and a friend to our city. Uh, as Pastor J.J. has said, that his work speaks for itself. Uh, he has been a champion for the most vulnerable. And then also suspending him without the due process of rushing to make, try him guilty when he should be innocent until proven guilty. Uh, we need to take our time instead of rushing to judgment. And then in this situation also, with, as someone has said, this is a very vulnerable district. And it was very uh, vulnerable and was in some challenges before he got there. In a majority Latino population, he has been a bill bridger, a, br a bridge builder. And we need people who build bridges at this time more than ever. And if you disrupt his work right now, you will hurt this district. So take your time. Think of those that will be hurt if you make the decision suspending him without giving him the due process. And let me say also, and people haven't said it, as a black man here, I'm going to bring in the race card. We're quick when a black man is charged with something to give him the harshest charges. Matter of fact, we tend to charge him in ways that's unprecedented, and I don't want us to do this here. Take your time and let the process work. Keep him in place so he can do the work that's needed. God bless you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Council President. My name is uh, Dr. Balay. I'm uh, from the African uh, diaspora or immigrant community. Uh, uh, I'm here to support uh, Councilman Karen Price. He's been a great support system for our community. You know, he's been uh, bringing our communities together, the Latino immigrants, the African immigrants together, and he's been providing a lot of resources. For our, uh, and I'm a refugee, a former refugee myself. He's been providing that resource like uh, pr pr like myself, and then the rest of in our community. And this is not fair. And I'm asking, I'm demanding all of you. In, in all fairness and justice and the principle of you know, democracy, please not to, to vote no on this motion. Because, you know, Colonel Price, he's a people's person. He cares for us. He's our friend. He's our leader. You know him. He's been bringing, you know, all our community. We have done a lot of, you know, events at the city hall. He's the only person who brought in you know, all this diverse community in Los Angeles together. Please, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm praying for you guys, not for him. I'm praying for you guys to do the right thing. Karan Price deserves to defend himself. This is his basic constitutional right, the right to defend himself. So I'm demanding you guys to... to uh, uh, vote no on this motion. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, if I can call uh, Adriana Cabrera, Brian Mendez, Adela Barajas, and April Cameron Sutherland, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Mendez. I'm 16 years old, and I'm a member of this community. And I'd like to please ask you to vote no against suspension against current price. This man has single-handedly helped bring everyone in this community up and rise and, and flourish to the best possibility that we all can. This man brought gangs of bloods and crips to a park to unite, to be able to sit peacefully and in harmony for kids like me and my friends to be able to sit at a park and feel safe and secure. This man has brought so many resources to this community, has helped our community flourish and seem as one of the greats, even though we were once the poorest. Our community is so diverse and so filled with people that current price loves. He has showed each and each single one of us, each individually, the love that we needed as a community to be able to grow. This man is such a great man to everyone here. And I hope you see that when you vote. 
I hope you think about the consequences that happen if you are to suspend our hero, our leader. Because once he's gone, what do we have? Who do we have to speak up for us? In times of need, in times of hardship, in times where we needed someone to please speak up for us, Current Price stepped up, Current Price did the job, and damn it, he did it well. So please make sure you vote no against the suspension. And I thank you so much for your time. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Well done. Next speaker, please. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, council members. My name is Adriana Cabrera. I am the president of the Central Limita Neighborhood Council. And I am here to deliver the community impact statement that was filed with city clerk uh, yesterday. Uh, I represent over 50,000 stakeholders in District 9. And the Central Lameda Neighborhood Council supports Council Member Paul Krikorian's motion to suspend current price from the Office of Council Member of the 9th District. Current price's action accelerated gentrification as his leadership has benefited developers and further marginalized renters who comprise 70% of our district. We ask that the City Council suspends price and puts the interests of our South Central District 9 community first Wait, over no, current sorry, price's personal Hold legal matters. Hold your time. Hold your time. Folks, I'm sorry. I know everybody has, is going to have strong feelings today, but we can't interrupt other speakers. Uh, we're going to go through this methodically and listen to everybody. So go right ahead. Okay. So that was the first council file. The other one is item number two. Uh, dear council member, the Central Lameda Neighborhood Council supports council member Marquise Harris Dawson's motion to include public input from City 9 constituents before considering or voting on any potential appointments to fill the City Council District 9 seat. Furthermore, per City Charter Article 9, Section 908, City Council may delegate its authority to neighborhood councils to hold public hearings prior to the City Council making a decision on a matter of local concern. The Neighborhood Council, Central Lameda, Candu, Zapata King, EC Southie, South Central Voices, and Downtown LA collectively form the most grassroots level of government in Los Angeles City Council District 9. Therefore, the City Council should collaborate with all the neighborhood councils in District 9 to conduct a fair and inclusive selection process in community. Uh, Adriana Cabrera, Central Lameda uh, Neighborhood Council President. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, we got to keep the meeting in, in order. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I just take a deep breath after that? Just, I need to. I just have to recollect myself because. Do you, do you need us to call another speaker, or are you okay? Yeah, yeah, please. Go okay, ahead. why don't we do that? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is April Cameron Sutherland, and I am from My Sunshine Has Come Refuge and also Smith Family Daycare. And I have a few things to say, but to reiterate what she said, no disrespect to you, Marquise Harris Dawson, but before these allegations have even came out, I had to say that I don't see you out in the streets like I do current D. Price. Current Price has came out from behind the desk and have came out to our community, have joined activities that we have provided. I've only seen you at the King Day Parade, and I'm just being honest. But back to what I wanted to say, Current Price, who has been a supporter and of my foundation and the community, who has hit the streets of the CD9 community to bridge the gap between black and brown communities by assisting with COVID care supplies, food, housing, and education. He granted us the opportunity to take over 150 children whom could not even afford to go to Disneyland. He provided transportation. He provided um, lunch for these children, and the children had a very great time. Some of these things that could possibly have never even happened that I haven't even heard being done in other districts or other communities. Um, Councilman Kern Price, 
he has looked out for not just me as a person, but for my children, my mother, the the um, daycare. He looks out for the families. He has provided turkeys during times when they didn't even have nothing to have. He provided food for them. He allowed us to have a winter wonderland um, on our streets. And I just want to thank him for that. Um, he personally leaves his office and come out to support us. He's providing re regenification to our parks and streets to help the gangs to come together, the, the Crips and the Bloods. I've seen some gang members that I know personally that I wouldn't have never have even thought or see them out in the streets Thank behind you. a council member. I've been seeing them come Thank out you. to support, and that's a good thing because most people <clears throat> of my color, Thank you. you know, they don't believe in politicians. They believe that politicians are all Crips. I'm afraid your time has expired, but thank you very very much. Thank you. Thank you. And let's keep current price in office. Thank you. All right. You. Thank you. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Creed Ward. I want to keep current price because, like, we need to keep him our leader. It's like he gave us a big turkey on Thanksgiving, but it was a check. So that's why we need to keep it. And what we did with that check, we kept our, like, we kept kids in our, in our it's like a place where we teach kids and stuff and, and go on trips. So we went to Lake Tahoe for that trip. We did a lot of things because current price helped us a lot. He didn't just help us kids. He helped our families. He helped everybody here. And would somebody have a frown on their face? He turned that frown upside down. <laughs> so that's why we need to keep current price. Because when I grow up, I want to be just like him. Amen. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can you, sir, young man. <clears throat> can, can you, can you come on up here just one for one more minute, please? Not, not for another minute. For, for another. Can you just tell us all your name again? My name is Creed Ward. Well, Creed, you did a great job today. And thank you. maybe one of these days soon you're going to be sitting in one of these chairs. So thank you for being with us. All right. Thank you for my minute. <laughs> Sorry I needed that. Um, I, I personally know Adriana. She used to be part of my youth group. My name is Adela Barajas, and um, I grew up in City 9. I know uh, Marquise. I don't know, and I'm sorry I had a couple of strokes, so I don't re re remember names. I work homicide victims. I'm a crisis responder. And the reason why I get emotional with Adriana is because she's an opportunist. She ran for Council 9. And the problem that I have is that she uses victims to uplift herself. And I don't like people like that. I've, I've, I've supported you when you needed me in CD8. I don't know you, sir, but you're both black and brown. I work, my sister-in-law was murdered by black people and I worked in uniting the black and the brown. And with current prize continues on that mission, then I support him. I don't know if he's guilty or not. I believe in his innocence, but today I'm here to let you know. I, don't, I know you don't understand what being black and brown is, but the other two do. If you both are from South LA, you know how we currently always, from day one, have to work twice to prove that we are innocent in any case, no matter what the case is. You, sir, posed yesterday on a picture working, the, helping the hotel people. You got arrested. You're smiling in that pose. Well, current price is not smiling right now. 
but you know that feeling. So therefore, know that the justice system has a system in place. Use that system to teach him or show him that you're going to be there supporting him, supporting the legal system that we have in place as a Latino. Thank you. As a black person, you know that we always, always have to prove our innocence because we're automatically guilty in the system. Thank you. So please, thank you, sir. Thank you very and much. And thank you for giving me that minute. My pleasure. Okay, I'm going to call a few more names. Dean Tuan Fitz, Charles Anchang, Daisy Garcia, Craig Bowers, and Charles Douglas, please. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, council members. My name is DeAntoine Fitz, and I serve as the pastor of Peace Chapel Church in Los Angeles, California, in the 9th District. Um, we also, I also live in the 9th District, and we have a community organization that does a lot of work in the 9th District. We are boots on the ground, and uh, one of the reasons why we are boots on the ground is because of the support of council member Curran Price. Um, I am here to support him, and the reason why is, number one, he has supported our community. Number two, nobody in this room is far from being in this position. It is so easy for people to accuse us of things, and to accuse a person is simply to accuse a person. Now, I want us to think about if we were in this situation. If we were in this situation, we would want to be innocent until proven guilty. And so I'm going to ask, I'm asking that you guys do the right thing. You know what the right thing is to do, and that is to hold off on this vote. We don't need to suspend this man. Not only will it impact him and affect him, but it will impact and affect a lot of other people. And so do the right thing. God bless you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Anchang. I'm the CEO of the Immigrant Magazine. I'm also here representing Africans in America Alliance. Uh, when we come to America, we look up to leaders like you to uphold the democracy that is the promise for humanity. You sitting here as elected officials are very important for the, for the people of CD9, CD9 that elected current price. At this stage in time, as we speak, what, C, what Los Angeles is going through with the homelessness crisis, what they're going through with mental illness, especially in CD9, we outweighs whatever charges and what we're doing here today. We saw a doctor, a medical doctor here, he should have been out there on field serving the community. But because of this perception, because of these charges, we are here now talking about something that's distracting the vision and the purpose of your work in office. So I'm praying that you guys look deep as res responsible leaders of the community. Look deep in your hearts to say suspension now is not necessary. He is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Let him serve because the community needs every minute of his time in office. Every minute until he can no longer afford to give us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Craig Bowers. Um, I'm building LA's first black-owned brewery uh, in the new ninth. Um, this is a $6 million venture. We could have done it in multiple places, but we really wanted to do it in the 9th District. My dad grew up and uh, was born and raised in the 9th District. Um, but the reason I'm here today is, you know, the reason we selected the 9th is we saw what Kern was doing. Kern was out there doing the work, uniting black and brown communities, the most, you know, the, the most economic challenges of any council district in LA. Kern was out there doing the work, and I've had a tremendous amount of interaction and admiration and respect for both him and his staff um, in doing this project. So, you know, I'm going to echo what everyone else is saying. You know, give the man a, a chance to prove himself. Let the legal justice, you know, system play out. But at the end of the day, there's too many things going on in the ninth to allow our councilmen to be sidelined um, while we wait for this, um, you know, for, for due process to work out. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is afternoon. Daisy Garcia. I work for Rec and Parks, and I work at the Gilbert Lindsay Rec Center, one of the most dangerous park. Um, and, and I can say that working for Rec and Parks, not just at that park, but South Park, uh, 22nd Street, um, 109th, Green Meadows, I can assure you that the difference that current price has made since he took office is noticeable. We have more turnout turn, turned out at the park now. We have we're starting our summer night lights program, and in my park we have registered over 500 kids to be part of our soccer program, His, majority Hispanic. So I, I I'm here representing that community and the community at South Park, the community at other park, and I can assure you, I live there, and I've seen other council pass by. The difference that he has made is tremendous. And you removing him, suspending him without him going through the proper process, the legal process, is unfair. And it will stop everything. A lot of our people doesn't know the consequences that it will take. You will freeze all the funding. The, all the projects that are in progress will stop. Not a, not a lot of us know that. And that would create chaos in our community. We're the poorest community the first district, but we are together and united, we're gonna stand. We're, we're gonna stand and we would just ask you to, like everyone else has said, let the process take its place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, let the Good process afternoon. take place. My name is Charles Douglas and I'm the uh, artist director for the Performing Arts for Life and Education Foundation. I've been in the ninth for over 30 years, bringing Funky Five Shakespeare to the ninth, okay? Young people acting, singing, performing arts, thanks to Mr. Price. As far as I'm concerned, as far as we're concerned, the price is right. <laughs> Since I'm so long winded, I'll have to read it because I'll be talking for days, okay? So let me just read right, 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 okay? Jobs, price. Health and wellness support, price. Positive and attainable social services, price. Multicultural promulgations and fair housing price. crusade, what? Price. price. <laughs> Accept community involvement, price. price. Identify supporting and evenly distributing community resources, who? Price. price. Altruistic, brotherly love and understanding, strong, healthy black champion, and to all of us, the people is price. price. As far as I'm concerned, the price. <laughs> Thank you. Rob Kwan, Patricia Strong Fargus, and Will McCree, please. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. And um, I'm Pastor Patricia Strong Fargus, well known as Pastor Pat all over the city of LA. I'm also the first black vice president of the Baptist Ministers Conference as a lady. And uh, I'm standing here in representation of our constitutional right. Just like the young lady who came up and spoke and we went Everybody, woo, she had a constitutional right to speak her voice. Just like others have come up and did their constitutional right and spoke with support for our councilman. Well, our councilman have that same constitutional right to stand up and defend himself. Defend himself in the point that we don't make him guilty without us proving that he's guilty. So I'm asking that this, that the city council board will just wipe that suspension. You've heard all the, all that we're doing in District 9. And I think Councilman Price calls it New 9. New nine. Yeah. Right. Can I hear it again? Right. New 9. Right. We don't want to go back to 09. Right. We're doing things in District 9 that even the world 
should look. How many places do you see black and brown standing together and loving on each other? Before the pandemic, I had 80% African Americans. Now it's 50-50 blacks and Latinos and other races. Unite is doing something because of a great leader like Councilman Price. So with, oh, I only got four minutes. So I want to say this, that earlier this week, Councilman Harris Dawson spoke publicly about black politicians being hunted down in a recent Alex Coyne podcast. And if I'm wrong, correct me. Also our own mayor, Karen Bass alluded to the fact that black politicians are held to a higher standard doing a broadcast interview. I'm black. I live the life. Thank you. They're brown. They live the life. Thank you. We cannot go back. Thank we got to go forward. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Um, I'd like to speak on items one, two, and general public comment, but I'll be brief. Uh, I want to thank Council President Kokorian for not handling this in the way that our previous Council President did. Um, I, I want to emphasize that whatever you do going forward, you need a public process. This should be in a bigger room. You should have remote public comment. Um, as you explore what to maybe do if you move forward with this, again, you have to go back out in the community and hear from them. Um, as to the suspension, I, I'm not personally not a huge current price fan, but I don't think that matters. Um, I don't think you should move this item forward today. I think you need to go back to the community and have at least one or two hearings. As much as what he is accused of might uh, undermine trust in local government, the way Nuri Martinez handled things also undermined trust in government. And I think we have to balance those competing interests here. Um, I just want to also note that, you know, as we talk about this, I, I think personally we need to hear more from DA Gascon. Um, we've gotten a little bit, and I think that's really serious stuff, but I, I think we have to have the appropriate consequences meted out here. But I, I don't think we can sit around for years as a trial can take a whole long time to resolve itself. But I do think we know enough to say that we shouldn't be rushing forward and we should at least be waiting a month or two before moving forward with something. Um, I also want to just lastly say that we've, we've been here before and we haven't seen the real reform we need. Um, there's an ethics charter reform motion that's just sitting there and has been untouched for the better part of a year. And as you look at other people and point fingers, let's look within and maybe actually do things that will really reform City Hall because getting him off of that horseshoe won't do anything to dramatically change or improve people's perspectives of City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? My name is William McCree. Um, Muhammad Ali was the people's champ, man. You know, not based on what he did in the ring, but his ideas of how he can affect change and how he can make the people better by the things he did out with the people. Current Price is the people's champ. You, you, you've heard it for yourself. In, in, in District 9, you know, and as I said here, I'm wondering really, watching everything, what, what's the agenda today? Because some of you, of you men and women I see didn't even bother to look up sometimes when the people were speaking, but when the lady stood here to oppose current price, I saw everyone look up. So I was sitting here wondering how many minds are already made up regardless of what we stand here and say. That, that's all I got for you, man. I, I know Curran is a good man. I know his accomplishments. He don't have to say them himself because everyone is here to say them for him. You know, but how many of you guys' mind are actually already made up because some of you look like you'd rather be in other places? And that's just my observation from sitting in the crowd. That lady got up here, she opposed current price. I saw every phone get put down, every head lift up. Some of the supporters get up here and I see people drift to other places. 
Y'all, y'all have a good day. Vote your heart. Thank you. Rosie Rios, Spin G, Senait Admasu, and Mauricio Medina, please. I've been knowing Karen Price for years, years and years and years. Right back doing Dad Han. Yeah, everybody know Dad Han. Remember Janice's daddy? We call him Dad Han because he was like a daddy in South Central Los Angeles. And that's what Karen Price is. I know when somebody doing wrong and when he's doing right. If you hear my last name, you think it's a Spanish woman coming up. You're going to make a mistake. My name is Rios. My dad is Cuban descent. But if you hear it, you say, oh, here's a Spanish woman coming up. And when you look, you say, your eyes will get big as a cup. <laughs> but here I am. You see what I mean? You, make a, you would make a mistake if you let him go. He's feeding half of South Central. And I know all of y'all is good. Ain't, no, ain't nobody bad up in here. I can feel it within my, within my soul. I'm a missionary in West Angeles, Church of God in Christ. I'm almost 80 years old, and I know when you ain't right. I know that. You, ain't, you can't get nothing over me, because I was raised up in South Central when all the pimps in the floor, pals was out way back in the 60s. You see what I'm saying? That's a nice man. He's feeding over, over a 1,000 people once a month at his office. These people are hungry. They don't have nothing to eat. He's South Central Los Angeles is a clinic where a lot of people yeah. coming in there is sick as a dog. Yeah. He is the overseer of that clinic. I sit on the board. You would make a mistake. Please, for God's sake, Come on now. for God's <laughs> sake, please, 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 please. please, please. Please. Vote to let him come back. Now, I'm going to say two things and I'm going to take my seat. Mm. It was a woman in the Bible that convicted of, 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 of adultery. And the people was going to stone her. That's right. But God stepped in. He said, wait, wait, wait. Don't stone her. And she did a whole lot in the community. One more. Pilate in the Bible want to kill Jesus. Right. And Pilate said, I don't want that blood on my hands. Right. Right. Don't have him on your hands. Uh -huh. Thank you. Don't, don't do that, please. Thank you. God said, let the people eat. Thank the people you. is Thank children. you very much, man. Little bitty little babies ain't got nothing to eat. I've been working with the homeless Thank you so much, ma'am. We need to move to the next speaker. I slept Thank you. Get row for two months to find out what Thank, it is. Thank you so much. Please. Next, next and speaker, I know, please. I truly believe that everybody's going to do the right thing. Thank you very right? much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Do the right thing. Thank Come you on. so much. Say, Thank No, say, I'm no we need to. Right. I'm sorry, ma'am. We need to move on to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. All right, well, all right, let me call a few more names. Spin G, Senait Admasu, Mauricio Medina, Sylvia Pandy, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, oh, council members. My name is Senait. I'm the founder and the president of African Coalition, which is immigrant-driven community-based organization, serves for immigrant community mental health and immigration service. As community leaders, we stand for Immigrants RLA. Means this is an initiative for every immigrants LA County that advocate and fight for equity, social justice, economic development, and uh, health care. So we stand here to say, who is our partner doing this in behalf of immigrants? Of course, Council Karen Price been there. Unlike the other ones, there's very few elective officials supporting the initiative work with us, walk the walk, he's the one. He doesn't, we don't have, although we have so much access to this office, he comes to us, the community, listen to us, what we have to say, what is our need. So he's been the people's person. Please let him continue to do what he likes to do, holding the community support our initiative, immigrant community. And at a large level, a large federal level, nowadays, US and African has something common to work together. 
He's the only one deliver the message and carry on going to Africa back and forth so he can empower black community to unite it, black and brown community and be able to invest and build our capacity. So I hope we trust our justice system. It's on you to decide whatever outcomes come. I'll let you one thing, Karen Price will never lose his integrity. He'll be with us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. My name is Sylvia Pandy, and I've in, I'm been in the neighborhood since 1976. And I never seen nobody like Mr. Price been working in the neighborhood like I did. I have experience with my grandchildren. They grew up in the same neighborhood. They used to ask him, where do you go live? South Central. They used to say, oh, where the criminal are. Oh, with the poor people. And my children used to say, I see a lot of people need help. And today's day is the second term that Mr. Price been in the neighborhood. And I've been seeing a lot of proof for my own people and for all the other people, they do need help. And they've been got help. I have seniors down my block. They've been had a lunch free for Mr. Price because they cannot go and get lunch or they don't have food to eat, or they don't have food to feed the children. I even see Mr. Price allows his workers, his helpers, and his office to help out my community. That we need people like him be helping us. Whatever you challenge him to do, whatever you charge him to do, I don't know anything about it, I know that work that he's been done in my neighborhood, in my block. I live in Wall and King and West Vernon. I live between his office and his house. His house is located in 38th Street in Woodland. We had a fire in my neighborhood. He came. He came three hours later to find out what the people needed. There was people from Guatemala. The house was burned up couple houses down for my, ha for my house, and he was there to help out. I saw personally, and he helped out a lot of homeless down in Broadway and Keene. I cannot walk anymore to Keene and Figueroa because there was a lot of homeless. Now I can say I can walk with my two grandchildren that came today with me. I walk free and happy because Thank you. he helped out those people. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call a few more names. Uh, Kurt Peterson, uh, Patricia Fierro, Mauricio Medina, and Asiahola Sankara, please. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Kurt Peterson. I'm a co-president of Unite Here Local 11. Thank you. Um, as a constituent of CD10, I can tell you firsthand that previous council president Nuri Martinez's so-called process was a shameful debacle that must not, cannot be repeated here. I can also say that Curran Price is a champion of working people. He not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. He has led our fights in many different times, including most recently to raise the minimum wage for hospitality workers throughout Los Angeles. We have thousands of members in CD9, and they are 100% in support of Curran Price as their leader. Finally, I have no doubt that if Curran Price looked like me, he would not be facing these unwarranted felony charges. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Osceola Sankara. I'm a law fellow with ACLU SoCal. I'm also the vice chair of LADOT's task force on non-police traffic safety alternatives. Um, there's a very, very important conversation happening today, and I um, am not here to speak on it. Um, I'm here to speak on uh, item 10, and ACLU SoCal, we and our partners 
are not in support of AB um, 645. We have um, strong concerns. We see the decades of racist transportation planning that have left black and brown communities in our cities with the most dangerous streets. And uh, we join the call of so many community organizations, um, so many houses of worship, um, so many young people who've been calling for LA for years to fix the streets. Um, so we believe that the most appropriate path forward uh, to a city where uh, traffic fatalities are a thing of the past is to uh, commit to redesigning our streets so that they are safer. That said, we are hearing that there are going to be amendments to the bill in the Senate Transportation Committee on Tuesday. Um, and we would like to take a look at those. Uh, we would like you all to take a look at them and um, have a conversation. Of course, today's conversation is, is very, very important. Um, I don't feel like we have enough time to engage with anything else on the agenda. Um, so our ask, um, ACLU SoCal and PUSH LA today is um, if we respectfully would request that you continue the resolution um, so we can see what happens with these amendments and um, have an opportunity to have a more full discussion on AB 645. Um, on a different date when um, there's less things that are um, very pressing and extremely important on the agenda. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to call a few more names. Clemente Franco, Irma Hallwood, James Shirley, and uh, Jerry. Says, oh, Dr. Jerry, maybe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Clemente Franco. I am born and raised in South Central LA. I feel like uh, Elbridge Cleaver when he was sitting in prison during the Watts riots, and he said that his ass wasn't Folsom, but his heart was in Watts. And so wherever my ass is, my heart is in South Central LA. And I understand that previous council people have been suspended when they've been charged. And so what Good for the goose is good for the gander. So if they've been charged and they've been suspended, the logical step would be to suspend. It's been a long time in coming and people want to talk about what's been done for South Central. We're losing South Central LA. We're losing it to developers. We're losing it to investors. And the council and this council person has been complicit in that. And so I think it's time to act the same way we acted when Weezer was charged, when Mark Ridley Thomas was charged, and now when Mr. Price is charged. The council needs some representation, and there's still quite a ways to go to the next election. And I think it would be apropos to have a special election and let the chips fall where they may. The gentleman that spoke a couple times, a couple of folks before me, he said that if Kern Price was his color, it wouldn't be happening to him. I agree partially, but I would say that if Kern Price was his color, he wouldn't be running a district that's 90% Latino now. And so do what you did before, suspend, get someone in there to take care of the district while we have a special election. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. I don't think I need that because they all know who I am. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And no, I'm not here to represent SEIU 7 to 1. I'm here to talk about the district that I live in and the man that I know personal, not maybe, but personal, have worked with him shoulder to shoulder. There, there are parks in, in the ninth district that I wouldn't have even thought about going to back in the days. It was too dangerous for me. And at my age, I certainly wouldn't be going. Now all I have to do is find out the date, the time, and the location, and I'm there. I work side by side, as old as I am. I haven't heard any, anyone mention the 27th Street bombing. I work side by side by my son. And I'm going to stand by him. He not only served the black, he served everybody. Not somebody, but everybody. 
he has love in his heart for everybody. And I'm going to stand today and not tell you guys, ask you guys. I'm going to tell you because I'm that old, old hand that's still fighting. Think what you're about to do. He served everybody. And don't even mention about the kids. He loved him some kids. There's parks that had, had been so bad, the gangs had taken over. The kids couldn't even, they live across, some of, live across the street from the park, couldn't even play in the park. But now this old hag even go to the park. Just let me know where, when, and how, and I'm there to serve. I'm a little slow, yes, but I, I stand my ground. Please, please think about what you're saying and thinking today. Not because he's a black man. He's a man. He's a God-given man in my district where I live. Thank you. I'm telling you guys, think before you make a bad judgment. Thank you. Let current price say my city councilman. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you, baby. <laughs> See, I know all these old police must too. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, uh, council, members of the council, uh, members of uh, District 9 uh, guests. My name is James Shirley, and um, I am requesting that you do not spend current price because so far these are alleged charges, and we have a process in place that we need to make sure and we state that everybody is due due process and this board here is in a position to where you can model for what the rest of the country should do in terms of making the right decision because right now we really need to restore integrity and justice within government because government is supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people, okay? And um, the million dollar question is that, and I re I'm often reminded of what Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The million dollar question, what happens when it happens to you? You have a family. How would you defend yourself if you're being suspended? And I've even heard talk of not only suspending them, but suspending them without pay. How do you get a legal team, okay, to be able to fight the charges that are being brought against you? And I'd like to close with this statement uh, from uh, Martin Luther King, and I'm sure all of us have heard it, when it talks about the, um, the ultimate measure of a man, or the ultimate measure of men, it's not where they stand in terms of moments of comfort, but when it comes to moments of challenge and controversy. This is a moment of challenge and controversy. Do not remove the person, which is current price, from office, because not, is, not only is it going to have a negative impact on him, but also on his constituents. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Just pull the mic down a little bit. There you go. Good afternoon. Um, I, my name is Memo Mendez, and I'm a part of um, Laura's Youth. Um, and he helped, he helped kids get off the streets and showed them that he cared and he was there for them. And he brought people together as a family. So um, instead of them fighting with each other, he brought them together. Um, so I don't have much to say. I'm, I'm just asking you guys if you would let our councilman continue representing us because the law says he's um, the law says he's innocent until proven guilty, and he needs to, he needs to have his day in court. Thank you for your time. Thank you God very bless. much. All right, uh, I I think this says Dr. Jerry, Jessica Guerrero, Johnny Andrade, and Joyce Kitchen, please. I'm Reverend Joyce Kitchen. I pastor a church that's in the New Ninth. 
Emmanuel H. M. Turner AME Church. I sit on the board of Avalon Carver Community Center, which is also in the new ninth. And I just wanted to add my voice to all of those who have asked you to do the right thing, which is not to rush to judgment. We've seen enough of just us in this community. We want real justice. And so it's good that we've come down here and we've taken time out of our day and you've heard from us. But I would implore you to do what Curran does, and that's to go out into the new ninth and hear people who can't afford to take off work to come here, who can't afford the train ride, who don't have a car to drive, who can't afford the parking, but go to the places and the people that he goes to on a consistent basis and hear them. For if you silence his voice, you're silencing the voice of over 200,000 people. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jessica Guerrero. Um, we all have to just keep in mind that we are all human beings. And as much as we want to point the finger and be the judges of anyone, we have to remember there is laws, everything is put in place for a reason. Um, but the biggest thing here is we're, we're rushing the process. He's innocent. He's innocent until proven guilty. And right now it feels like you've already decided. It's one of those things that if the representation doesn't continue in our ninth district, I mean, it's gonna be horrific to think what's next. And for all of the council members, I, I personally ask that you guys keep in mind, if you haven't done the work, you should look at the work that he has done that needs to continue to be done because he walks to walk and, and, and he does and he does the work. So there's nothing that I can say personally because everyone has said it, that the work has been done and it's gonna continue being done because he is innocent. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Johnny Andrade here. I'm the president of the South Central Neighborhood Council. Um, and, you know, just a little bit of, born and raised in the neighborhood, grew up in the area, live in the area. My family still stays in specifically the ninth. Um, and simply, this is a craven indictment. I want to remind you what happened not so long ago um, while with Alarcon, while he was fighting with his case and he was he was fighting his case and even convict and he was even convicted but at no point was he suspended from a seat not sure if you know um richard but he also made news for being um indicted and he, again he was not asked to be he was not suspended until he was proven guilty and until even that those those charges were overturned um all this was uh with the sole discretion that the business that that business ran as usual, um, so okay. I, what I what I want to really want I have I have my notes. I'm just um, I made a comment yesterday that if we were on the on the west side and council member and somebody mentioned this, um, he was a Caucasian man. He would be innocent until proven guilty. Unfortunately. Regardless of his accolades, if you've everyone's heard everything he's done, he's doing in our community. At the end of the day, he's a black man that is fighting. He's being treated as he's guilty and he has to prove his innocence. This is sad. We have to stop this. We are in our community where all folks that look like us are fighting that. So I do ask everyone um, that you really take a step back and not suspend our council member and our voice from our community. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'm going to call a few more names now. June Richard, Michelle Reed, Kelvin Sauls, and Maria Hernandez, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is June Richard and I have lived in CD9 for 61 years. I would like to address council members regarding the community improvements 
demonstrated through our leadership of our current council leader, Curran Price. Councilman Price has given my community a sense of hope and open-heartedness towards a brighter tomorrow. As a leader, he has visually provided several attributes to our area, a new and improved monumental coliseum, a family oriented soccer stadium, and an educational facility that will sustain the historical reflections of storytelling about the many people of Los Angeles at the Lucas Museum. He has focused on increasing affordable housing, identifying the importance of respect and diversity, provide employment opportunities, obtain $100 million for creating and renovating local parks and recreations, and partner with the mayor's office through Inside Safe Housing. Which has called, which had, had which has housed housed close to a hundred homeless individuals along the Grand Avenue, also known as South Figueroa Corridor, in which I reside. In my opinion, every time an effective leader is put into office in order to maintain the agenda and not go along with the political agenda, they have to follow, something follows along with them that comes with some type of scandal. And that's what I see is going on today, okay? Um, I believe if a suspension occurs for Mr. Price, the, this, these actions would devastate the progress of my community and abandon the future of my youth. Thank you. Success. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you. Next speaker, well, please. Good afternoon. Okay. Greetings, family and siblings. My name is Michelle Reed. I'm here representing and for home care workers, 74,000 home care workers in Los Angeles City of my buddy and friend, Kern Price, which my councilman, Marquise Harris Dawson kick butt, but I'm not here about my council member. And I, I was raised and born right there on 35th and Maple. Went to Trinity Street Elementary School, graduated, had my first job from there. So I know that district from before Kern came, then when it went down from the gangbangers, from the Watts Riot, all of that just destroyed us. And when he left from being senator to come there to be new ninth, he made that from compassion. And I'll fast forward. Right now, when we were up under the pandemic, he dived in so hard that the way everyone you've heard, I have fed the community. He has continued with the vaccinations and everything. He's such a compassionate man, hand on decks. And as me being an organizer, political organizer and everything, I know politics and politics. I'm hearing where stakeholders are trying to come up and swipe something down for title, create labels for themselves. When it ain't broke, why, why mess with it? And it's not fair. It's so much injustice. And it's a color card. Then when you got somebody leading from behind, just like when I, I mayor, Madam, Madam Mayor was running for office, how the big millionaire tried to take over. No way. We, we're not going to be sold out, bought out, and God knows we're going to stand with current price with the new 9th District because with little charges, what they're trying to come with, that's nothing. We can even come up and pay that. That ain't even trillions of dollars. It's propaganda, and I just ask each one, and Hugo, you just recently got uh, elected. All of you guys have came to SEIU once upon a time and shared your vision and what you're running for. And we believe in you. Thank you. Oh, so let's keep on rising and together we rise with the inclusion of diversity as current price stands. Well Thank you very much. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Pastor Calvin Souls, former senior pastor of Homo United Methodist Church, co-founder of the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. Uh, glad to be here today to stand in solidarity and support of Council Member Kern Price. I've worked with the Council Member uh, ever since uh, I started my tenure as a faith leader here in Los Angeles. 
most recently during COVID, I've had the uh, pleasure of collaborating with Peace Chapel Church as well as with Fremont High School in serving those in District 9 uh, dealing with the uh, challenges around COVID. Uh, he is a man that has uh, been able to provide leadership in a district uh, continuing to uh, face uh, demographic shifts. And through that, he's been able to build bridges in such a way that uh, you can see it being reflected today by the multi-generational, multicultural, multilingual, uh, as well as uh, multi-ethnic you know, uh, individuals who are here uh, today. And so as a black immigrant uh, who's part of the Africans in America Alliance, uh, and convening all of you know, our black immigrants to see how either we can continue to build bridges for equitable belonging. I stand here to say that suspension will be an abdication of the judicial system, cause disruption in uh, uh, Council District 9, and it will facilitate a path towards voter suppression. On, Council President, in an interview with Teva Smiley, you said that this is the beginning of a conversation, not an end. And so I hope that this conversation continue, and it continues within the framework of justice, fairness, and opportunity to give the council member an opportunity to defend himself as we continue to work together to bring development and equity in the new ninth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call a few more names. Kofi Pepra, Maria Hernandez, Marvin McKenzie, and Maria Espinosa, please. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. My name is um, Kofi Pepra. I am a, a college professor. Uh, I teach geography. And Karen Price is my brother. I mean, I come to the city hall to, you know, make my case. And he's the only one who walked up to me, hugged me, and said, we got your back. And then let's look at all these allegations. It's just ridiculous. It's almost like, what, he signed something, his wife benefited um, some company. He, it's like, come on, these are allegations. We haven't proven it yet. And why are we finding him guilty? And it looks like it is more like nitpicking, nitpicking stuff. Like, okay, let's pick this, let's pick this. Okay, all right, now let's make a case. Where is the accuser? We got to bring him here to explain what are the basis for this and why are they attacking him right now when the people need him so much and then now immediately they put another black man to be in his position they are coming for you because we know that's what they do whenever you are a black person they look forward to almost like you have to be like an angel to be able to survive <laughs> over here so please don't find him guilty until you take him through the court system and let him defend himself. So we are here for him, and he's our brother. We're going to support him. And everybody here, yep. we're going to support him until we can support him anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María Hernández, y yo vivo en el Distrito 9 por 12 años. Soy sobreviviente del cáncer. Y solamente vengo aquí para agradecer al concejal, porque uh, él hizo que su um, equipo uh, tuviéramos nosotros la oportunidad de sobrevivir lo que es la pandemia. Gracias al concejal, tengo un familiar que fa murió. Desgraciadamente, las vacunas en ese momento no estaban. Sin embargo, gracias al concejal, a lo que, al equipo y todo lo que hizo, Yo pude sobrevivir por las vacunas. Ese recurso, él lo llevó a nuestra comunidad. En mis vecinos tenemos de todas las razas. Habemos blancos, habemos latinos, habemos afroamericanos, habemos de todo. Sin embargo, él siempre, siempre, siempre no ve eso. Por favor, les pido a cada uno de ustedes que visiten nuestra comunidad. Yo que vivo ahí, puedo mirar el esfuerzo que hacen. Sé que a veces... Ah, como nosotros tenemos que educarnos un poco más, pero sin embargo, tiramos basura y él no se cansa, su equipo no se cansa de trabajar y limpiar nuestra comunidad. Así que les pido a ustedes que dejen, déjenlo trabajar. 
ya basta, las personas que están haciendo esto, lo están haciendo un daño y saben que no es un daño al concejal, nos están haciendo daño a nosotros, que vivimos ahí, déjenlo trabajar, yo estoy agradecida primero a Dios y segundo si esa vacuna no hubiera llegado aquí, señores yo no estuviera aquí parada, mis hijos tampoco jugarían en el parque que él limpió, que ahora yo disfruto. Son años de trabajo, eso es lo que tienen que mirar, años de trabajo. Por eso la comunidad lo, lo amamos. Yo posiblemente aquí pudiera estar trabajando, porque he venido aquí, porque necesito, necesito los, los beneficios, todo lo que el concejal trae. Gracias. Por favor, déjenlo trabajar. Gracias. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. I'm Good afternoon. Reverend Marvin McKenzie, the pastor of Walker Temple AME Church, located in the New Ninth. It was quoted earlier that the gospel writer said that, let the works that I've done speak for me. Because of the works of Mr. Price, our community was able to respond to the 27th Street fireworks explosion. Because of the works of Mr. Price, my church now is able to feed hundreds of people per week. Because of the works of Mr. Price, he was able to establish the Trinity Neighborhood Center located at my church. Because of the works of Mr. Price, we are now able to provide counseling and social services to those in need. Because of the works of Mr. Price, we can provide drug and alcohol rehabilitation. To suspend him unduly suspends the work that is being done in the new ninth. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Audrey Landeros, and I'm a youth here, at, born and raised in Los Angeles City District 9. Um, Los Angeles City District 9, in a city that prides itself on fairness, justice, and progress, an issue of utmost importance ha has come to the forefront. The City Council is currently deliberating the possible suspension of Councilmember Kern Price, a dedicated public servant who has made the invaluable contributions to the development and transformation of our beloved CD9. Today, we voice our unwavering support for Councilmember Price and the principles that form the foundation of our democracy. Yeah. Councilmember Price has been a true blessing to our city. From the inception of his term, oh, cute dog. he championed initiatives that have revitalized it, neglected areas, created opportunities for economic growth, and improved the lives of our citizens. His efforts have played a significant role in reducing unemployment rates and enhancing economic stability in the district. His efforts secured funding for affordable housing developments, incentivized the construction of affordable housing units, and advocated for policies that protect tenants' rights. His efforts secured funding for the repair and renovation of roads, sidewalks, and other public works. His unwavering dedication to public service has brought about the transformation of the once ignored 9th District. The new 9th stands today as a testament to his visionary leadership and tireless efforts. Councilmember Price now faces serious allegations that threaten to derail his remarkable achievements. We here all firmly believe in the fundamental principle of innocent until proven guilty. In the face of these accusations, it is essential to preserve the principle upon which our justice system and democratic institutions are built. Rushing to suspend Councilmember Price without a fair and thorough investigation would undermine these principles, erode public trust, and set a dangerous pre president. We stand united in support of Councilmember Price. We call upon the City Council to uphold the values of fairness, transparency, and integrity that our city holds dearly. Let us not forget the invaluable contributions Councilmember Price has made to our community and the immense potential he possesses to continue to positively shape our cities. Thank you. Can you future. just tell me your name again, please? My name is Audrey Landeros. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much for being with us. All right, uh, Jesus Escandon, Maria Espinosa, Pamela Anchang, Herman, I think Patricia Fierro already spoke, right? Uh, if not, um, and then also Mauricio Medina and Spinji. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Councilmember Krikorian. I'm Jesus Escandon, I live on uh, 51st of Figueroa. <coughs> 
I made it out here taking time off of work, uh, <coughs> part-time work, because I believe in current D. Price. I believe in his humaneness. I believe in his simplicity. I believe in his, his thoughts, the way he carries himself. Um, I, as a kid, I grew up in East L.A., and back then, the L.A. City Council and the city of L.A. were, were something that was uh, of another world. It wasn't within reach to, to me and my family, my mom, my single parent mother that raised my brother and I. But now, as an adult, uh, the city has changed. And that's because of people like Current Price. The Price is right. He makes us feel welcomed. He makes us feel uh, like we're, we're, we're worth something. Uh, he gives us opportunities, uh, employment, job training, economic opportunities for, for small businesses, and all these other things that, that take uh, social mobility that enable you to move forward and, and, to, and to progress economically and also as a person. So uh, when I read about these uh, charges in, in, the, in the newspaper, um, I... I, I don't believe they've, they've been uh, detailed uh, specifically, or maybe I, I, miss, I didn't read a few articles, but they're so minor right. in compared to the person that he is Amen. and what he has done for the district and what he has done for the city of L.A. They're so minuscule in comparison. So um, that's why I'm here, because I believe in current price. I believe in what he has done in the new ninth. I believe on the new vision of the city of L.A. I believe in you, Paul, uh, Paul Kukorin, because I remember when you ran for the assembly. Uh, you're a good person. I believe in you, Marquise Dawson, because you're good people. You really are. And um, Council Member Hugo, you're new. I, I haven't seen you. Uh, I read about you winning, so congratulations. But I, give, I, I implore of you to, Thank you to give, let the due process play out. Thank Don't you. rush to judgment. And let... Uh, Council Member Current Price stay representing the people in Thank the you, District sir. 9 because that's what he deserves. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Pamela Ann Chang. I'm an immigrant from Cameroon and naturalized American citizen. I'm the founder and co-publisher of the immigrant magazine, The Voice of Immigrants. I'm here on behalf of all immigrants and the Africans in America Alliance and anyone fortunate enough to have encountered the nurturing, mentoring, or support of the council member, current Price. He has from day one, from the first day I ever encountered him with my family, been a steadfast partner to the collective fight for the dignity and rights of immigrants. To suspend him would be detrimental to the growth and development of our immigrant community. Here are some reasons why. He sees us, immigrants, when nobody else does when everyone sees us as a nuisance. Though not an immigrant, he empathizes with our challenges and struggles while recognizing our contributions and has gone above and beyond to consistently champion immigrant causes on immigration, housing, jobs, etc., earning his reputation as a staunch partner and advocate. He has steadfastly demonstrated his commitment to providing essential immigration services, not only to residents within his district, but also to those beyond its borders. Esteemed organizations such as Chirla, Karisin, and Baji have found in Council Member Price a steadfast partner in their collective fight for the dignity and rights of immigrants. I witnessed firsthand a few years ago when he pledged over $2 million to these organizations and communities to help immigrants rectify their legal status amongst other needs. I could go on and on, but suffice it to say, as an African, he is a constant supporter of our community, making us feel like we matter. He graces our events with certificates and appreciation and recognizes our milestones and achievements. Please give him a chance to continue to fight for us. If he couldn't do the job, the man of service that we all know would be the first to say it. And I say that because I listen to the same podcast, um, Mr. Dawson, and uh, I understand that this is also an exercise in making sure that he can perform his duties. But I know the man of integrity would say I couldn't if he couldn't. So please give him the chance to serve and do not suspend Thank him. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I've called all the names other than I, I might have missed Cecilia Navarro. So uh, if, you, if I've called your name, come on up and, and speak. 
Yeah, Mr. So Herman, which items would you like to speak on? All items, and there's no non-agenda public comments. That gives me two fucking minutes. So item three, the definition of gravely disabled to include conditions that will result serious harm and physical and mental health of an individual. Fuck you, Paul Krikorian. Because Durazo, under item 16, the fucking cunt bitch, under health care for workers. I've been a health care worker, motherfucker. And I know what it's like to care for people. And what you've been doing with this shit has been totally unacceptable and fucking wrong for health care for people and homelessness and mental health with people with homelessness. So, again, now let's go to item one. What the fuck has Mr. Price done wrong? What the fuck has Mr. Price done wrong other than do his fucking job, help his community, and socialize everyone to know that he's done a fucking great job? What's your fucking problem? Other than we got a fucking dickhead over there, attorney, to recuse himself because he and the fucking Krikorian dick face. What the fuck, Krikorian? Shut the fuck up. I'm talking. I hear voices. Is that my mind? Stick to the agenda fuck? item or you'll be yeah. done. So I'm talking about suspension of Curran Price Jr. DeMille. And the reason you shouldn't suspend him, he should receive every motherfucking dollar he deserves. Because he's a bad motherfucker. Fuck you and fuck your attorney because you need to be indicted for the shit that you allowed him to get away, with, get away with and you signed off, you fucking dumbass attorney. Don't act stupid. You need an indictment and you're soon going to lose your bar license for fucking with people's lives, fucking for current price, and fucking with people in District 9. They just want to live and have a happy life getting old and sane for the record, 42 U.S.C. 1983. Fuck you. Fuck the attorney and fuck the president and God bless America, you fucking retard motherfucking H rag bitch. For for those for those who haven't seen the theatrics that we just observed before, I apologize. We hear it every single day. Every single day without exception. And um, it's it's something we have to put up with. So I'm sorry about that. I I definitely know that. I will cry all day and shout all Thank you. But that is not up. Thank you. I I really apologize. It's just it's it's the cost of free speech, unfortunately. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cecilia Navarro y yo soy un una persona que vive en el distrito 9 por más de 24 años. Me ha tocado conocer al concejal Curren Price. Él es una, un servidor público um, respetable. Me gusta cómo trabaja. Él ha trabajado muy fuerte para nuestra comunidad. Ha traído muchos empleos. También ha renovado los parques. Nosotros estamos contentos con, con, con él. Y queremos que no sea destituido, no sea corrido, para que de esta manera podamos seguir trabajando juntos. Nosotros apoyamos al concejal. Gracias. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else who I've I've missed? Uh, Tori Bailey. I didn't call oh. Tori Bailey. Please. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María Callejas. Yo vivo en el Distrito 9 desde hace 30 años, en el sur centro de Los Ángeles, cerca de Green Meadow, de donde soy, de la comunidad. Si no tuviéramos a Corin Price, ese lugarcito estuviera igual de abandonado que hace 30 años que yo llegué. So, por favor, denle en el espacio a Corin Price que pruebe su inocencia y no lo juzguen antes de saber lo que es Corin Price, porque era una excelente persona. Yo viví atemorizada con un grande árbol que tenía en mi casa. Dormíamos en un cuarto cuando eran las noches de tormenta. Corin Price me lo quitó. So, gracias, denle la oportunidad a nuestro concejal, lo necesitamos la comunidad, no lo necesitan ustedes, lo necesita la comunidad. Gracias. Gracias. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'd like to say, is anyone here the judge and the jury? Well. My name is Tori Bailey. I'm an elected homeless liaison. I've been knowing Karen Price before he was even an elected. So since 91, 92, somewhere in there, 
and I have done a lot of work with him. And his work is more important than these allegations. And that's all they are, are allegations. And until you individually can prove him otherwise, I would like to ask, no, I'm not asking. We're demanding that he is innocent until proven guilty. Thank you. Thank you. Really quick, since I have a few more seconds, this young man right here, Current Price is doing the most when he's bringing communities together, cultures together, and that's something this entire state needs. Thank you very much. All right, was there, was there anyone else who had signed up who wished to speak? I think I've called all the names. If so, just go ahead and come on up. And if I... If I may, Mr. Oh, President. Oh, yes, please, um, Mr. I have City Attorney. Sergeants check outside if there were other people waiting there, and there are not, so we've exhausted everybody who came to the meeting who wanted to speak. Very good. Then, at least for purposes of this meeting, uh, we'll go ahead and, and close public comment. And, uh, Mr. Litt, if we could please go ahead and, and we're going to take up items one and two together. So, if we could read those items into the record, please. Very good. Item number one is motion Krikorian Harris Dawson relative to suspending Council Member Price from the Office of Council Member of the 9th District of Los Angeles City Council pursuant to Charter Section 211. Item two is a motion Harris Dawson Krikorian relative to the eligibility requirements for potential appointments by the Council to fill a temporary vacancy in a Council District and the options for selecting a voting representative for the Council District that includes public input from constituents and civic institutions of the District. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just I want to open this up with a couple of uh, comments. First of all, I'm so great. We're all so grateful to all of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on down to City Hall. I know that it's an indication to us of how important this is to you that you took time out to come down here uh, in such large numbers uh, to speak. And uh, so thank you. And I think that the with almost unanimity. Uh, one of the messages that I took from what I just heard was the incredible importance of having a sitting elected city council member for the people of each and every district of this city uh, and how important it is to have a council office working on your behalf. We all know that from personal experience. To hear it from you and uh, hear it repeated so many times in so many ways I think sends a strong message that I hope everyone out in Los Angeles is also listening to about why it matters that you have a council member who's fighting for you. It does matter. And um, I can tell you at full disclosure, uh, Curran Price and his wife have been personal friends of mine for 17 years. So we, we know each other well. Um, but as well as I I know him personally. Uh, I think talking to the people of the 9th District um, was even after all those years of knowing Mr. Price and his service, going and talking to the people of the 9th District, as I have, um, in their homes, was eye-opening even for me <coughs> as someone who has known him that long. Um, because time and again, what I heard from people who maybe didn't even actually know his name, when I explained to them what his job was and what he does, it would, it was, he's the guy that put that program in our park. He's the guy that fixed that sidewalk. He, and, and I heard it again and again, even from people who may, may not have known his name. And so um, I, I just, I think it, this is why I have said from the beginning of this that it's important vitally important, and I hope the press and everybody else picks up on why this is so important that we consider every aspect of the actions that we may or may not take. Um, and the motion that I put forward uh, is to begin that process of analysis. It's not any foregone conclusion that we will take any action towards suspension or anything else. A few people said, said that. It is not. I'm the author of the motion, and I am telling you, that is not a foregone conclusion by any means. So why would we even consider a suspension? Um, 
the reason, I, well, let me take a step back. The city charter and the city administrative code does not require that a member be suspended even when they're charged with a crime. That is something that is left up to the discretion of the council to decide. When there is a conviction, it's a very different matter for obvious reasons. Um, but it is our prerogative to decide to suspend a member who has been charged with felonies. Why might we do that? Well, one important reason might be if there were a course of conduct of corruption or something that would suggest a risk to the taxpayers or a risk to the city or a risk to the city council for continue allowing a person who has been charged with such things to continue to serve. Um, and that, if I can just draw upon a few analogies from the past, um, when other members, when, when there have been situations in the past where we were presented with declaration after declaration, signed, sworn testimony, evidence about a member's active corruption and taking shoebox fulls of $100 bills in exchange for votes, when we saw that again and again and again in public, that was the product of an FBI investigation, and when charge, even when charges were then, after months of hearing this evidence, when charges were filed by the United States Department of Justice, well, in that situation, it was pretty clear that the council needed to act to protect the people of Los Angeles. Fast forward to the situation involving uh, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Um, different kinds of charges also brought after an FBI investigation, also charges brought by the Department of Justice. Um, I appreciate the comments that a few speakers made about this process being different from that one because at that time, this council moved very quickly to suspend Mr. Ridley Thomas in light of those very serious charges that were brought against him. And in the months that followed, it became very clear what the real world impacts of that suspension were. I, I don't know, as I reflect back on it, whether um, it was a mistake ultimately to, to vote for suspension, but I do know it was a mistake to do so so quickly without thinking about what would come after that. And the result was that for almost, for the remainder of his term, we were left with a district without a voting representative that they had elected, and um, for a, a fair amount of that time, without any representative at all. And ultimately, the resolution that, that we applied in order to ensure that there would be a voting representative of the 10th district was to a, appoint a voting representative. And, but that's not the best, most satisfactory resolution of a situation like that because the people haven't had the opportunity to vote. But it's all we have because we don't have the option to remove a member when there's charges pending. That is illegal for us to do. We cannot, somebody, one of the speakers mentioned, the best thing to do would be to have a special election or something. No, we cannot do that. We are actually prohibited from doing that because we cannot remove a member until they are convicted of a crime. Once that happens, then you can set a special election. And, you know, but until then, there is an elected member of the city council. They you know, may not, if we suspend them, they won't be an active member, but they are still the member representing that district, so we can't hold an election. And, and I think a lot of times people missed this when we had the situation in the 10th district. A special election was never an option for us. So the best we could do would be to appoint a voting member. Um, I say all that history because I think it's important that we consider those things. And some might argue, well, let's, I mean, we should just be consistent. 
We should just, you know, we that happened then. We should do the same thing now. I think, you know, uh, consistency is important, but so is learning from experience. And we learned plenty from that experience. Um, and then I started thinking further about this and thinking about our precedent, because a lot of people have talked about that too, the precedent of the situation with Mr. Weizar, the president, precedent with the situation with Mr. Ridley Thomas. But I had actually not been thinking about this until recently. Um, when I first was elected to the city council a long while back, we had another precedent, and that was the charges that this same district attorney's office brought against Richard Alarcon. Now, in that case, uh, I was confronted with, and we were all confronted with a situation where a member of the council was charged by the district attorney with charges that, if they were true, would have disqualified him from being a member of the city council. It was whether or not he had committed perjury in discussing uh, or in registering to vote with a particular address, whether he in fact lived in the district that he was elected in. Those were what the charges that the district attorney's office brought were. If he were guilty of that, he would not have been eligible to even be a member of the city council. But at that time, no one on the council that I can recall proposed that he be suspended. We certainly didn't take action to suspend him because we made the decision either by action or, or omission, I don't really remember, but we made the collective decision to let the justice system play out. He said he was not guilty. He said there were reasons for this. We let the justice system play out. And in fact, he was ultimately acquitted of all charges. And so um, as I think about that, I, I think it's important that, that we learn from our lessons. Uh, we learn lessons from those experiences. Uh, and we also look at the consequences that might come from suspension. And uh, you've all described one set of consequences that deeply concern me. And that is, what happens to the district if a, if a member that represents that district is suspended? What happens to the delivery of services? What happens to advocacy with city departments? Those are all really important set of factors, number one. Number two, where is your voting voice on the floor of the city council? When there's suspension, there is no voting power. So that's another problem because we have fully one out of 15 members who would then be ineligible to vote. Um, there are issues that come from a suspension that are personal to Mr. Price, obviously. And some people mentioned, one is the controller of the city has already publicly said that if we were to move forward with a suspension, uh, he would not pay Mr. Price's salary. Now, I don't believe the controller has the power to make that decision. But that is what he has said will happen. And he is a separately elected official that we have no power to restrain in, in that sort of thing. So I, I am concerned that there will be a real impact, obviously, on Mr. Price and his family, if that were to happen, that would be punitive in nature. And it, is, it shouldn't be the purpose of a suspension to punish someone. It should be the purpose of a suspension to protect the city. But if we are punishing someone, that should come after there's a finding of guilty, after these charges are, are played out. Um, and, and that has not happened yet. There's another reason that, this, that I'm concerned about this, and that is that if the controller were to uh, discontinue pay uh, to, to Mr. Price, this, a similar situation happened with Mr. Ridley Thomas. And the previous controller chose not to pay his salary. And the city was sued for that. And I'm not going to go into a lot of details about that. But let's just say 
that that potential liability ended up costing the taxpayers a lot of money. And, um, and at the end of the day, Mr. Ridley Thomas was made whole, got his salary, um, and, you know, th that was a liability for the city. So we have to take that into account, too. These are things that apparently will happen. The controller has said they will happen. So we need to be mindful of, of, of that impact as well. So there's a lot of things, I think, that are important for us to consider here. Um, and that's why I want to speak in strong support of Mr. Harris Dawson's motion, item number two, which is, which dovetails with item number one, which is if we were to proceed with the suspension, then what? How do we engage the public? How do we engage the people of the Ninth District? How do we reflect the voice of the people who elected the suspended member to make sure that they preserve their voice, that they preserve the ability to, um, to have their district represented within the city, uh, within city government. And I think that that is, before we can make any decisions on suspension, we absolutely have to have the answers to those questions that Mr. Harris Dawson's motion raises. And so I hope that we'll move forward with that today item number two, and I hope that we will get that report back and that we'll be presented with uh, the array of options um, that, that may be before us. And I, as I'm sitting here, I don't know what all those options are, but if we get a report back, you know, we can, have, we can make a decision more thoughtfully about the nature of the suspension, the underlying reasons, and also, you know, what, what comes next. And then I, I guess just sorry I'm I'm I, I've got a, I've been thinking about this a lot. Needless to say, uh, the one other point I would make is that there's a real difference a, a, between where we are n right now today with the charges that have been brought against Mr. Price and where we were with the charges that were brought against. Uh, both Mr. Weizar and Mr. Ridley Thomas, and I alluded to that earlier. The difference is we haven't heard one iota of evidence to support these charges. Now, I don't, there may be, and these are serious charges, and we need to take them seriously, and that's why I brought this motion in the first place. I don't think there's any getting around the fact that these are serious charges, but we haven't seen the evidence in support of it. In the other cases, we had. We, we you know, had a, a fairly high level of confidence of what was going to be presented by the prosecutor in court. And I don't have any idea what the district attorney's office is going to put forward in support of these charges. And in terms of whether there's a continuing threat or risk to the city uh, caused by uh, a, a, a course of conduct. I, I should say this too. Um, the, the district attorney did not reach out to me about these charges in advance. And I'm the president of the city council. And if there were a continuing risk or some danger to the city and its government and its taxpayers and its people, I would have hoped that the district attorney would let me know that so that I could take appropriate action to protect the people of Los Angeles. And that didn't happen. So that suggests to me that that lessens my concern about whether even the prosecutor thinks that there is a continuing risk of some kind to the taxpayers. So um, those are a few of my initial thoughts about this. Um, I'd like to invite my colleagues to, to speak. Mr. Harris Doss. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Krikorian. And uh, I want to uh, just publicly applaud you for uh, the, the disciplined and sober way in which you've approached this. Uh, this hearing today, just what we've accomplished today, is a hundred times more than what happened during the Ridley Thomas thing. We literally made a motion at about 10.05 and voted on it at 10.15. 
during the time Mr. Ridley Thomas was being arraigned, and it was known by the world that he couldn't even be there. Um, and so uh, this hearing is an, a, 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 an example of um, the kind of input that the council always needs to get when it's making a very, very weighty and important uh, decision. Uh, you know, I, I agree with uh, all the comments of, of Mr. Kokorian and, and don't want to uh, uh, repeat them, but, but I do want to speak to the folks that um, talked about the particularity of the relationship between the justice system and black people writ large and elected officials in particular. Um, from my point of view, I have to look at this with the long view. So everything that Mr. Kokorian described happened, uh, it, it's an accurate description of what happened in the case of CD10. But here's some other things. That suspension happened right before the city was voting on redistricting which turned out to be a bit of a mess if you've read the paper. Then, the minute redistricting was over, suddenly the seat had to be filled that day. And we did another rush, uh, another rush job. And today, we find ourselves in a similar situation where suspension is being considered right before the city decides, the council decides, what will go on the ballot to reform the charter around redistricting. So we are in a situation, which is why it was important to me to get in, get in front of this. I want to second Mr. Kokorian's motion, put up for my own motion. We have a situation where you're going to have less representation from this community in this part of the city during a time when critical decisions are being made that last for at least 10 years. In the case of charter reform, more like 25 or 30. Uh, and so I think all those things have to be looked at and taken together and taken into account before we move. Because again, there's been nothing put before us that says the city needs to protect itself by moving right away. It's just, there's not, this, the district attorney hasn't suggested it. There's nothing that's been put in the public record that suggests it. Uh, and certainly uh, nothing that any city staff has brought to us that suggests that. And so, I, you know, I think it's, it's it, again, it's important. Redistricting the size of the council, very likely land use authority of the council. Much of the authority that Councilman Price has to implement some of the programs that people stood at that podium and said that they really like, well, all those things are up for conversation in the, in the charter reform process, which will happen uh, presumably during the, the, the time of this case. Uh, and then, you know, uh, lastly, I will say and, and just, you know, posit. You know, personally, um, our government is set up with checks and balances. The, the, you know, judiciary, executive, legislative, they're supposed to be checks on each other. And there ought to be a fair amount of skepticism. Some are going to have it more than others, obviously. There has to be a fair amount of skepticism uh, on the part of all of us on other branches of government. We just gotta, we can't just say, oh, because they decided to point the finger at somebody, that that means somebody did something. Um, and, and this is why, you know, in other situations in the council, the, 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 um, the prosecuting body would enter, would, would release evidence into the public record. They did that because they knew people were skeptical. Uh, and it allowed uh, uh, folks to come to a, to, to a decision. And so I, I want to formally move that we, on item one, uh, that we continue that to our next regularly scheduled rules committee, uh, which I think is August 25th, um, and then ask for an I vote on uh, item number two so that we can get that study and see what other places do. Because uh, Los Angeles is not the only place where their elected officials get in trouble, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and so other people, <laughs> Other or their elected officials are accused of things. Uh, so we can uh, study this and find out what other places do and make sure the folks in the ninth district, because again, I'm confident current, you know, Council Member Price can handle this and can handle much more. Uh, I'm confident in the individual of this body. Folks got to look out for the people of Council District 9. And that is now all of our, our, our jobs. And so the uh, the motion uh, item number two seeks to do that and do that in a uh, take a scientific approach to that challenge 
and uh, deliberate and come up with the best uh, solution going forward, should we even need to do that? So uh, with that, I'll yield the floor, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Mr. Soto Martinez. Thank you so much, uh, Council President. Um, I don't want to repeat a lot of the things that were said. I think, I think both comments were, were very spot on. Uh, I was not elected office uh, last time the suspension happened, but I, I got to say, seeing it from the outside, it, it, just, it, is, it is as you described. Uh, it seemed rushed, uh, very messy, and I, it didn't sound like there was a plan B. Uh, you know, and so I, I, I'm, I'm glad we're not, it looks like we're not going to repeat that today. I, I think that's, that's the right thing to do. Uh, and I agree with both of you that we should have a, a thorough uh, and, and meticulous process uh, as we deal with this. Uh, you know, I, I say this a lot. Um, I grew up in the ninth district. I uh, went to Ascot Elementary and, and Carver. Uh, eventually moved more more south uh, and went to Jordan High School. That's where I graduated high school. But uh, you know, I, 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 I a lot of the things that were said here, um, I agree. You know, ninth district for many years uh, was not heard. It was overlooked. Uh, I've seen the difference. Uh, everything you describe, uh, I, I, I've seen it because I still drive through there. My parents still live there. Uh, and so, you know, I think it's in the interest of the communities uh, and as a city as a whole, uh, you know, that we do our due diligence and ensure that people have a voice uh, as much as they can uh, in the process. And so, yeah, I would agree with, with the recommendation of uh, Marquise, Marquise that we continue one and we move forward to item two, which would give us time to look at it uh, and not make uh, unnecessary decisions that we don't have to. And so uh, I, agree with, I agree with those points. Very good, thank you. And uh, I just noticed, sorry, that uh, we've been joined by a guest, Council Member Tim McOsker, uh, who although not a member of this committee, uh, I wanted to give him an opportunity to, to be heard as well. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Tim McOsker, Councilman of the 1-5, a nearby neighbor to the new nine. And uh, I just want to say that I, I came in after another committee meeting to listen into the public testimony and just so uh, overwhelmed and impressed with the exactly what we should be doing, talking to community. And I appreciate this committee so much. I realize I'm not a member. I, I thank you for the uh, sober and thoughtful analysis, and I'm particularly impressed and want to commend uh, 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 Council Member Marquise harris Dawson for his motion, because I think being in community and hearing from community is the most important thing we can do. I had the same experience um, from the outside as, as my friend Ugo, uh, where we were on the trail and we talked to many, many people that had the, uh, a bad experience uh, last time we suspended. And so I, I, I just really thank you for the opportunity to let me listen in and to speak, and I appreciate the direction that you appear to be going. All right, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. All right, so if there's nothing else, members, with that, uh, Mr. harris uh motion uh, to continue item one until uh, our next Rules Committee meeting, we will hold that on the desk. Uh, and then is there any objection to proceeding with a motion to approve item number two? Seeing none, that will be the action of the committee on items one and two. So thank you all very much for joining us. Um, that will take us then to item number three. three. Item number three, please. Okay, item number three, CLA report and resolution, Park Corian relative to establishing the city's position regarding the city's 2023-24 state legislative program for Senate Bill 43, Eggman, which would expand the definition of gravely disabled to include conditions that will result in serious harm to the physical and mental health of an individual. All right, Mr. Soto Martinez, do you want to be heard on this? Uh, yes, just make some brief comments. Uh, sure. You know, I, I was really torn about uh, how to vote on this one, uh, but ultimately I land on, uh, you know, that. Obviously, I think the LPS Act is, is, should be improved, but the, I think the larger issue right now is the, the lack of services, lack of beds, infrastructure to support the folks that would fall under this. And so uh, for that, I, I think we're a little bit putting the cart before the horse, and so I, I, I will be voting no, but I wanted to explain uh, why, why I was moving with that decision. Very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and I want to thank Mr. Soto Martinez for for raising the flag on this uh, th this issue. It's a it's a very hard one, and it's one of the most difficult ones. And and uh, you know, I totally agree that you know we have a lack of beds, we have a lack of services. We encounter people who are sick who actually want help and can't get it. 
So the idea that we would impose help on people, I, I'm not sure where that help would come from. At the same time, uh, watching the pain and anguish that people experience on a daily basis and nightly basis, I cannot in good conscience uh, reject this, uh, reject support of this this notion because we literally have people losing uh, their lives, and uh, again, we have a broken system, and I think it 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 isn't going to get better until we move towards fixing it, which I think Mr. Soto's opposition, Mr. Soto Martinez's opposition, points to, um, and so I just wanted to register that and acknowledge um, acknowledge my particular position on this issue, but I I'll be uh, voting affirmatively. Okay, uh, and, and I think we can probably all agree on uh, the fact that this is wholly inadequate to address the underlying problem. Uh, it's step one when we still needs, need steps two through ten as well, um, and this does not provide that. But I do think that it's important that we advance with, uh, with step one. So uh, with that, if there's uh, – well, let's go ahead and call the roll on item number three. Okay, very good. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. Councilmember Harris Dawson? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? No. Very good. All right. Uh, that motion carries. Um, then that will bring us to item number 10. Uh, yes. Hang on. Item 10 CLA to report and resolution Blumenfield Harris Dawson relative to establishing the city's position regarding the city's 2023 state legislative program. For Assembly Bill 645, Friedman Santiago Ting, that would authorize the city to implement a speed safety pilot program. Subsequent to the release of the agenda, the CLA has submitted their report. Mr. Harris Dawson, you thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. There was one speaker uh, out of all of our speakers who talked about this issue and asked us uh, to continue. Uh, you know, the, the idea of uh, camera surveillance is still controversial in lots of places. Um, you, you know, I, I'm generally supportive of it as an alternative to armed traffic enforcement. Um, but just as a practical matter, uh, we were able to confirm that there are expected amendments on Tuesday in the Senate Transportation Committee. Uh, so it seems to make sense to wait uh, before the council takes a position on it until we know what the actual bill is going to be. Mr. Soto Martinez? I mean, I, I don't have a strong uh, opinion on that. Do, do we know what the amendments could possibly be? Or? Don't know. We don't know? Yeah, okay. see, that. my only concern would be continuing it means a fairly long continuance in the Sacramento legislative calendar because we won't be back until yeah, they're, they're, they're August. In and uh, Yeah, they're, they're in. And, and the session is September? No. It's an odd-numbered year, so they may go... Oh, John, if you could come on. <laughs> yeah. no, sorry. Mr. Wickham. Sorry, John Wickham with CLA's office. I don't have the exact date on that, but typically it would be the end of August or the first or second week of September. Since your next rules committee is, I think I heard, August 25th, 25th. that means that you would have basically a week or two in order to take a position on the bill that would influence the legislature. Um, what... If the amendments are coming out next Tuesday, then oh. you could consider something in council when it gets to council and, and send it back to committee if you'd like. Would that work? If we, if we move it out of committee now, we, by next week we'll know the amendments, and then if they're major, we could decide to re send it back to committee. If they're not major, we could put it before the council for a vote. You could amend it in council as well. Or amend it, yeah. All right, I think, that I, I think we can work with that. Okay. okay. Uh, then with that, the recommendation is to adopt the CLA's revised resolution attached to the CLA report dated June 20th, 2023. Uh, Mr. Wood, if you could call the roll. Oh, yes. Councilmember Krikorian? Aye. Councilmember Harris Dawes? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, we'll need an affirmative vote on the items other than one, two, three, and ten. Oh, you're right. Comment, but we never. Thank you. Get a final disposition on those. Thank you. So, on all of the items that I indicated as consent candidates, and I read out the uh, recommendations, we can take those up collectively. Very good. This is for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve through eighteen, and nineteen. 
Very good. Uh, those items are now before us. Is there any objection to approving the consent recommendations? Seeing none, that will be the action of the committee. And those are all approved. And is there any other business before the committee? That clears the desk, Mr. Chair. Very good. Thank you all very much. We are adjourned. I would like to thank the three guys, the three young men that sitting <laughs> heard me out, felt my pain. As always, you are very kind.